father of the devil, the father of lies. So get right with the Lord. There's a day where judgment is coming. Praise the Lord. You want to hold that? You got it? I'll pass that. Okay. God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day when God's going to judge this world in righteousness. Folks, today's the day of salvation. Seek the Lord because time is but a vapor. And God expresses time as a vapor in His Word. And then what's going to happen after that vapor? You're going to be standing before a holy and righteous God. And you're going to give an account for every idle word and every idle thought that you've ever had in your life. You know, God says He still has the, He gives you the breath of life. And every day you wake up, you got that breath of life. Is that much time that you have to give your life to the Lord? Time is on your hands right now if you're hearing the sounds of these preachers out here proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Salvation is only found through Jesus Christ. If you're not bowing down on your knees when you get home at night on, at your bed, put your bed and praying and pleading and asking Jesus Christ to be a, 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 a living example, God give you his word as a living example of how to live your life. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you reading the word of God today? You know the word of God, that Bible that we can find anywhere, we can download it on our cell phones and read it daily. That word is magnified above all things. There's nothing higher than the Word of God. King James Bible, Genesis through Revelation, 66 books with over 40 authors, and it is in complete harmony with itself. Jesus Christ alone fulfilled over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament alone. You know only God can fulfill prof prophecies like that. Just the odds of having just eight prophecies fulfilled Alone, you have to bury the whole state of Texas in two feet of silver dollars, mark one, throw it out of the helicopter, st stir all them coins up, and for you to go down and pick up that one coin your first time is the odds of you fulfilling just eight prophecies. And Jesus Christ fulfilled over 300. In God's word, he commands us to repent, which repentance means. It means to have a change of mind, a change of heart change of heart and mind from what from your sins from your disobedience to the word of god the, the lord what is the word the word is uh the word that became flesh and dwelt among us emmanuel god with us god is with you today my friends but if you're a friend of the world you're an enemy of god in james 4 4 the bible says adulterers and adulteresses and look we got so many adulterers and adulteresses in our world today um, it's just overwhelming, especially in the United States of America. This free nation has got to be the most wicked nation there is on the planet. But God is calling you to repentance today. For behold, there's a day coming that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yes. Are you a proud person today? And all that do wickedly. Are you doing wickedly today? There's a day coming that shall burn you up. For behold, there's a day coming that shall burn you up. And God will leave you neither root nor branch. Folks, come on now. Give your life to the Lord before time runs out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, the Bible says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor sodomites, nor drunkards, nor liars. Are you lying to your children tonight and telling them about Santa Claus who is a uh, lie? There's no such thing as Santa. Jesus Christ is the reason for all things, not just for this season, but for every season. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, amen. You know, God commands us as believers, true believers, Christians, who have um, denied themselves of their own flesh and pick up their Bible daily and obey the gospel. God actually commands us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is a commandment of a true believer, a born-again Christian. Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, born-again Christian. 
We're not all sinners. Uh, we're, some of us are saints. Some of us do actually obey the gospel. And you know, God says in his word that he, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4.13, a lot of us, like me as a child when I went to church, um, I learned that scripture when I was a little kid. But you know, I didn't, until I went through my life, living this sinful life, and all those things that were good and bad opened my eyes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because all things good or bad will work to the glory of the Lord. Let that glory work in your life before you take your last breath. Let you let God open your eyes to your sins. Because the Bible says that if you are a sinner, you are a slave to sin. And the love of the Father is not in you. Are you loving the Lord today by repenting of your sin? You know the greatest joy for somebody who loves the Lord is to keep his commandments, to obey his gospel. Because his gospel is a commandment. It's a, it's a love commandment. It's a love letter to you. It's a word that will tell you how to live your life and how to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It teaches you all these things, how to love your neighbor as yourself. And what's the greatest love that we can do to our neighbor? We come out here and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell you to give your life to the Lord and to repent of your sins. If you're into adultery, quit being an adulterer. If you like to watch pornography, quit watching pornography. If you like to get drunk and drink that alcohol, you're a drunkard. Stop being a drunkard. God says in his word that no drunkard has any inheritance in God's kingdom. If you like to smoke that marijuana, that's sorcery, that's drunkenness. And no sorcerer has any inheritance in God's kingdom. Revelations 21. What? 21 Revelations 21 8 talks about sorcery and other things. You know, you know I'm all I care about is the gospel of Jesus Christ above all things. If I can't love the word of God above all things, then I can't love my neighbors myself. And for me to love my neighbors myself, I have to tell you the truth. And this world is the wicked generation that we live in today. From the time I was a little child, we could actually glorify God. And a lot of people were open to the glory of God. But today, people have turned their back on God. It's very obvious when you see what's going on around you today. You got men that are drink, uh, dressing and acting like women. You got women who are acting like men. That's a very confused generation that we live in today. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah. You all know that story about Sodom and Gomorrah. God rained down fire and brimstone on that city and destroyed that whole city. And only Lot and his family were saved. And what did his wife do? She turned around and looked back. And what did God do to her? He turned her into a pillar of salt. You can't be turning back and looking back on your sins like you're missing them. You got to give it up. You got to draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let your laughter return to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Are you going to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord before you, you take your last breath? Well, we want you to and we pray that you do because a prayer from the saints is what God hears. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. Are you living in sin today and you talking to God? Well, God does not hear your prayers. John chapter 9, verse 31. God does not hear the prayers of sinners, but only those who do the Father's will. What is a sinner? That is somebody who is willfully sinning against God. And then you turn around and you ask God for forgiveness. And you turn around and repeat the same sin over and over and over and over and over and over. And you think you're good with God? No. You need to read your word and start listening to it. The Word of God is to draw you unto Him, to, for you to be obedient to His Word, to obey His Gospel. The Bible says, if you love me, you will obey me. If you read your Word of God and you listen to it, you will find that God's Word is holy and righteous. And without holiness, no man will see God. Are you ready to see God? Well, if you're here supporting this Christmas holiday stuff and bringing your kids here and not sharing them about Jesus Christ, Forget about all this stuff. Everything you see right here, right now, is friendship with the world, and it makes you an enemy of God. All this stuff you folks see right here, this makes you an enemy of God. You are a friend of the world, and you need to come out from among them, my friends. My friends, Jesus loves you, but nothing comes before God. And what are you putting before God? Well, listen to this. Don't you love your children enough to raise them up, to know the Lord Jesus Christ, to live for Him, to obey Him? Don't you love the Lord that much? Can't you love the Lord that much? You're created in the image of God. You're created for God's glory. So glorify God. Your best life is when you give your life to the Lord and you deny yourself and you pick up your cross and you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the greatest life that you can have. There's nothing greater. There's nothing that will ever make you feel any better because that is the fulfillment of life. The Lord Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of life. 
Are you going to fulfill your life with the lust of this world? Or are you going to fill your life with the Lord Jesus Christ and start obeying his gospel and start taking care and loving your neighbor as yourself as God loved you enough to lay down his life for you? We're to lay down our life for the Lord. We're to lay our life down for you. Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And these words that I command you this day shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk to them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, you're to be about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, the word of God is magnified above all things, my friends. It's time to start repenting. Repentance is the greatest thing that you can ever do before the Lord, because you're turning from your sins. The Bible says to go and sin no more, John chapter 8, verse 11. The Bible says in Luke 13, 3, repent or you will perish. Literally, there's no gray area here. Done. God's word does not have a gray area. You're either living for the Lord or you're not. You know, the Bible says if you sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Are you sinning willfully when you know the truth? There remains no more sacrifice for sin. But I got good news for you. Today, you can turn from your sins. Today, you can stop living in sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. The Bible says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor sodomites, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners have any inheritance in God's kingdom. Here's this good news. Such were some of you. Some of you have been washed, been made clean. These brothers right here that I'm preaching with have been made clean because we have turned from all of our sin. We have repented of all of our sin. We give our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We obey him. We're in his word every day. Jesus Christ is Lord of the Sabbath. He is our rest. There is no more Sabbath because Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. When Jesus Christ rose from the grave, he became our rest. So we are in complete obedience to his word. He bought you with a price when he went to the cross and he rose from the grave. Whether you believe in Jesus Christ or obey his gospel or not, Jesus Christ owns you and you will stand and you will bow before him one day. And if you're not confessing Jesus Christ as Lord in this life, well, you got the breath of life. You're going to do it in the next life, my friends. And we're here to warn you today that God commands holiness. He doesn't, he has not, he, he, he came to save sinners because that's what he had to do because we've all fallen from the glory of God when we fell in sin. But the good news is, is that you don't have to live in sin anymore. God will give you a way out. The Bible says there's no temptation that can overtake you. God gives you a way out, but you got to give your life to the Lord. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're breaking the first commandment, and nothing comes before God. What's the second commandment? Don't bow down to any other gods. And what are you bowing down to in this world? Buddha? Are you bowing down to Muhammad? Are you bowing down to Buddha? Or Mary? Or your clothes and your cars and the things of this world? What are you bowing down to? Because you are putting something before God. What are you putting before God? Is it really worth your soul to put that before a holy and righteous God? When God is preparing a place in heaven for you, for you, for you, everybody, got, God is preparing a place for you in heaven. But you got to give your life to the Lord. You got to sacrifice your life and be holy and righteous and obey the gospel. That's actually the best way to live, is to live for the Lord, not to be selfish and prideful. Did you know pride leads to destruction? Pride leads to destruction, my friends. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> For it is the power of God and the salvation to them that believe. To the Jew first and then to the Greek. Is there any Jews out here? It's the gospel's for you first. And praise the Lord. Because I'm a Gentile and I've been drafted in. We've all been drafted in. We all can come to salvation. We can all come to the to, to the God, to Jesus Christ the Lord. If we come broken before God, with a broken and a contrite heart, God will not despise us. He will not despise you, my friends. Today, give your life to the Lord. Seek Him while He may be found. He can be found today. Don't you have any loved ones that you might lose tomorrow? It could happen. I lost my baby sister not but a couple months ago, and she was only 38 years old, and she was just a young lady living in her prime, just like you, 
you ladies out here right now, and I got a phone call that my sister was found dead. Okay? Her life is done. It's over. Her vapor is gone. Was she living for the Lord? Well, she wasn't living for the Lord. That's why it's so important to come out and proclaim the gospel of repentance. Because if you're living in sin and then you die in your sin, you're not going to inherit God's kingdom. You must be holy. Uh, uh, you know, the Bible talks about a righteous man is scarcely saved. So where do you think the sinner will stand on that day? If a righteous man is scarcely saved, where do you think a sinner is going to stand? So in other words, where do you think you're going to stand if you're not willing to give up your sin? If you're a cigarette smoker today, you're living in sin. Do you think God's going to allow you into his kingdom when your body is a temple and it belongs to the Lord? The Bible says he who destroys the temple, God will destroy. Are you destroying your temple today? Are you shoving that tobacco down your lip and spitting out tobacco, spit on the ground and stuff? Defiling the ground, defiling your lip, living for that poison? That poison that gives you a rush, mild, high. Are you living for the cigarette smoke that you live because you can't live without it? Well, you got to start learning how to deny your flesh and start giving things unto the Lord and start obeying Him. If you like to watch that porno, you like to watch that porno, I bet you you do, sir. But I tell you what, that porno is going to lead you straight to hell. The, the Bible says uh, to flee from fornication and sexual mis uh, immoralities. You think, it, you think that's impossible to do? No, it's not. If me and my brothers here can uh, live faithful to the Word of God, so can you. If me and my brothers here can resist all temptations, so can you. It's not an impossible thing to do. God gives you a free will. You can freely choose this day whom you're going to serve. If you want to serve the devil, Mohammed, who is a pedophile, then you're going to serve them. But if you're going to serve the God of the Bible, you better, you're going to start reading the Word of God. You're going to open up your Bible and you're going to start reading it. You're going to be concerned and worried. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says. Are you going to fear the Lord today? If you have no fear of the Lord, you have no wisdom. But you're going to stand before a holy and righteous God one day, my friends. And I don't mean to be so harsh, but God's wrath is going to be harsh. It's eternal torment in a place of darkness, eternal darkness, the blackness of darkness forever and ever, where the smoke of your torment will rise. That's the wages of sin. And yet God gives you a way out by emptying himself of his glory and becoming a man. Emmanuel, God with us, that word that became flesh. It's the living word of God, my friends. Read the Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and correction and reproof and righteousness. We got to strive for righteousness in our life today, my friends. If you're not living a holy life and a righteous life, there's a problem. It's because you love your sin. Most of you suppress, if not all of you, are suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Some of you are, are, are seeking the truth. Well, right now you're getting the truth. But you want it the real truth, the real, 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 real truth. The only truth is the Word of God, the Bible. You need to start reading it. Obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who do we keep time to? We don't keep time to nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ. We always have and we always will. And that time is running out, my friends. Time is running out. Repent. Because judgment day is coming. And God's grace and mercy only apply when you have the breath of life. When you die, it's over. There's no more grace. There's no more mercy. Seek the Lord, my friend, while he may be found. You can be gay, be happy. There's nothing wrong with being happy. But if you're a homosexual, you're on your way to hell. Just like all sin. If you're not willing to give up a sin, you're on your way to hell. If you're guilty of breaking just one law of God, you're guilty of breaking the whole law of God. You got to give it all up, my friends. We're calling you to repentance today. We're calling you to draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let your laughter return to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord today, and he shall lift you up. Get yourself lifted up today, my friends. Give your life to the Lord. You got a decision to make before you take your last breath. You got to submit to that one God to give you your conscience, the Word of God. Give your life to Him, my friends. Time is running out. You're not promised tomorrow. 
And you know what? Turn to Jesus. My friends, turn to Jesus, please. I mean, we really, I mean, I love you so much as, as I have to come out here and proclaim the gospel to you because I don't want nobody to perish. I don't want nobody to go to hell. I don't want people to, uh, to be living in sin. And, and you know, I, you know what it breaks, it breaks my heart when I sit, sit around and I'm preaching the gospel and I see people that don't want to pay any attention to, to, the, to, the, to God. They just want to deny Him. Like we tell you to turn from your sins, it's like it makes you mad. The, you know, people in the last days, you know, they hate, they hate the Word of God. You know, they hate, they love wickedness, and they, and they hate what is good. What, I mean, do you, don't you love good? Don't you want to live your life in a place where there's good, and there's love, and there's, and there's giving, and there's caring, but yet there's still one God, and we all should be magnifying that God together. Because you know, the Bible says if we, uh, if we seek God's face, that he would heal our lands don't you want your lands to be healed but what about you how about you seek god's face first because at least it can start with you are you going to seek god's face today you're not promised tomorrow none of us are promised tomorrow you know that life is but a vapor of time if you think about eternity and your life right now that you have right now to give your life to the lord think about that one last day when you take your last breath Think about that. Now live your life according to you taking that last breath and who you're gonna who you're gonna stand before. You're gonna stand before a holy and righteous God who has actually blessed us enough to live a word that he wrote by holy men of old who spoke under the inspiration of God, and then God came down from heaven, emptied himself of his glory and become a man. So he could lay down his life, the innocent lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins, my friends. And God shed his blood for you, innocent blood for you. You know, the wages of sin is death. That's why when you die, you will go to hell because your wages you have earned in, in your sin, you're going to go to hell. But Jesus Christ never sinned. He, there was no wages of death on him. So when he died, he rose from the grave on the third day, just like he prophesied that he would do. Now today is the day of salvation. Today, all men are, God is calling all men everywhere unto himself. But you got to repent. You got to open your word. You got to live for the Lord. You got to obey the gospel. Faith without works is dead, the Bible says. If you're doing, if you're living by the word of God, amen. Well, we're out here today to call you unto salvation through, your, through, through giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and going out proclaiming the gospel. Because honestly, your blood is on my hands. I have to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot deny you from me telling you about the Lord Jesus Christ. God commands me to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us to come out here and proclaim the gospel. To raise our voice like a trumpet. On these highways and these byways. Whether you want to hear it or not. But there are these conditions that we got to do in our life to go out and proclaim the gospel. We can't be hypocrites. I can't be living in sin and come out here and proclaim the gospel to you if I haven't gotten this sin out of my life. There's sins of ignorance, and then there's these willful things that we do. Are you going to give up that willful sin in your life? You know, but the Bible does say that you can't be perfect. So be perfect. But you got to read your word of God to get to know God. Because he is the way. And if you know the Lord, the true living God, you're going to, and you want to seek the true living God, I'm just going to tell you right now, my friends. Go get yourself a King James Bible and start reading it. Because one day that word is going to judge you. There's a way that seems right to a man. I'm running out of things to say. The wages of sin is death. Praise the living God. My friends, the Bible says that thus it behooved Christ that he died for our sins and rose on the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. Yes, my friends, Jesus came unto his own and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them hey, gave he the power to be called the sons I, I need of to God. Get back into my Bible yes, Jesus Christ came. So much.